um Okay, thank you so much, uh, Christine. Please confirm that you can hear me all right and see my screen. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, so, hello everyone. My name is Alice Karanja. I'm a postdoc uh, research fellow at ICRA for wild agroforestry based here in Nairobi. And I'm going to make this presentation on behalf of my colleagues uh, at ICRAF, the Center for International Forest Research, C4, and the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences in Austria, where we have collaborated to understand drivers of food choices in low and middle income uh, countries following a systematic um, mapping approach. So uh, practically, I will take you through the background of the study without wanting to repeat most of the things that have been said. I will then go to the methodology uh, that we followed to do the systematic mapping, and then I will present the results and conclude. Hopefully, I can be able to do that within the 10 minutes that I have been allocated. Um, so we realized that many uh, low and middle income countries are in the process of nutrition transition and already experiencing shifts in their food systems as a result of uh, you know, some of the drivers that have already been discussed here, such as rapid urbanization, the issue of supermarket, uh, supermarketization, and also globalization. The recent statistics show us that hunger is on the rise with more than 700 million people undernourished in 2020. And this is uh, actually particular for the case of Africa, where Africa has recorded to have the highest prevalence of undernourished people, with one person in every five Africans recorded to be undernourished. And this presents about 20% of the population which is actually more than double the proportion of any other region. Um, the, the diet and nutrition health outcomes are in part consequences of interrelated food choice factors. And this is the processes by which people select what to acquire, what to prepare and what to consume which has been increasingly understood in the context of the food environment. And without again wanting to repeat, the food environment describes the spaces within which consumers interact and make decisions about uh, you know, what to acquire and what to prepare and what to consume, which are uh, defined in terms of physical and economic access to food, the quality and safety of food, uh, convenience in terms of the time and effort it takes to acquire and uh, prepare the food and also exposure to marketing information and promotional materials that, you know, have uh, greatly been described in the past sessions that I have really enjoyed. Uh, then consumers are key actors in any food systems and their interactions with the food environment offers a great entry point for us to understand what and where, when, how and why food choices are made or why people eat the way they do. So these individual-based motives, as we refer to them, uh, form important pressure points, you know, shifting the supply side components of the food system so that they can be able to respond to consumer needs. And these individual motives are often shaped by consumer preferences, their socioeconomic and demographic conditions, the social environment in terms of uh, where and whom people interact with and how that affects their food choices, psychological factors, and also cultural appropriateness or cultural relevance of the food. Now, uh, in order to understand or rather to identify knowledge gaps and priority areas that can be targeted for future research, we conducted a systematic mapping review of current evidence on drivers of food choice. And our focus on the low and middle income countries is because these are the, uh, the spaces where rapid nutrition transition, the triple burden of malnutrition, and increase in diet-related non-communicable diseases are occurring. So we systematize the uh, highly fragmented current knowledge about food choices in uh, LMICs. We categorize these drivers uh, to individual-based motives, 
and dimensions of the food environment. And then we use heat maps to illustrate and highlight the scope of the current evidence and distribution of studies across um, geographical regions, the rural urban landscapes, and also target population groups. Next, I will describe the methodology that we followed to conduct the systematic mapping review. So an iterative scoping exercise and you know, consultation within the other group was carried out to develop um, a such strategy and identify a list of such terms appropriate to the research question as shown in this table. Then uh, the inclusion criteria which was followed was that um, you know that they include the studies had to feature at least one of the key terms they had to feature at least one uh, lmic or rather low middle income country that is within the income classification of the world bank in 2020 we also included studies that are peer reviewed and published in english language until december 2020 we also included observational and experimental studies that use either quantitative, qualitative, and mixed methods. But uh, we excluded any, of course, study that did not meet this criteria. And also, we excluded studies that examine dietary intake without getting to the next step of explaining why, or rather, the reasons why decisions uh, to acquire or consume food were made. So literature searches were carried out in uh, electronic databases of web of science. We also used uh, Scopus and Google Scholar to identify public, uh, publications that were not indexed in these uh, portals. So to identify the literature, we conducted an exhaustive search of all relevant publications following Prisma-based principles as shown in this um, figure here. So out of the uh, rather, this exercise gave us, or rather it yielded uh, a total of 2163 studies. And after screening in terms of eligibility criteria, as I have described, and also other factors that were considered, only 100 studies were included for the final synthesis. And in the next uh, slides, I will describe our results. In terms of first distribution of studies by year of publication, we see that out of the reviewed 100 articles, uh, they were published between 2000 and the year 2002 and 2020, with the number of publications increasing per year. But then we can see between 2018 and 2019, there was a surge of studies uh, trying to understand drivers of food choices in LMICs. Uh, when it comes to geographical distribution, this map here shows how our reviewed 110 studies were you know, distributed across the different regions of LMICs. And we find that uh, individually about 35% of the reviewed studies were conducted in sub-Saharan Africa. And, but then when we look at the individual countries, we can see um, India and Brazil having been the, the, the highest studied regions. But then even in Africa, we cannot ignore to see a high number of studies conducted in South Africa, in Ethiopia and Nigeria, while in East Asia and Pacific, we can see China and Malaysia also carrying um, high studies on understanding drivers of food choices. Now, when it came to uh, the individual drivers of food choices, the mapping exercise generated a list of 40 individual factors, which we then grouped them into seven clusters, including um, psychological factors, social cultural factors, sensory appeal, health and nutrition perception, ethical concerns, and social interactions and social demographic. So the grouping of these factors really was based on how the factors were interpreted to relate with each other. And we see that the psychological uh, cluster contained the highest number of the individual uh, based motives that were identified to influence food choices in uh, low and middle income countries. 
but then when it comes to the food environment, it is clearly understood that we have different uh, frameworks that have been suggested. For example, we have the HLP, uh, Christian Turner, whom I see on the audience, and I'm really excited to see him has also proposed a framework. And then, but then for this particular um, study, we adopted the, the, the groups or rather the dimensions of the food environment that have been proposed by Dons et al. in 2020, which include the concepts of promotion, affordability, availability, food convenience, food quality in terms of safety and hygiene, and also sustainability properties, which in our state that actually we refer to as ethical concerns, which describe the environmental and social impact that are associated with the food items. So back again to describe how the, uh, the evidence has been distributed, I mentioned that we are using heat maps so that you can be able to uh, you know, understand the distribution of, of the reviewed studies. So the first thing, as I also mentioned before, is that Sub-Saharan Africa emerged as the most studied region and the region that, you know, we have many studies trying to understand drivers of food choices, particularly on issues of food availability, affordability and convenience, and when you look at individual-based motives, you see how the nutrition perception, psychological factors, and social cultural factors emerging as highly studied aspects of food choice. But then uh, we see that the aspect of food safety and hygiene, ethical concern in terms of um, you know, the environmental and social impacts of foods uh, that people decide to, to consume, or even some people are concerned, for example, in terms of animal welfare. And while these issues are highly recognized, they are they emerged as the least studied aspects that are dry food choices. And this is not just for the case of Sub-Saharan Africa, but also in totality, like looking at you know, the total evidence that we were able to find even from other regions, food safety and ethical concerns were the least studied. In terms of distribution of evidence across the rural urban landscape, we find that the urban settings are the most studied uh, with, as expected, the issues of affordability, convenience of food and promotion being the most studied in terms of the food environment domains, while individual based factors, you find like almost all other aspects uh, except ethical concerns have been highly uh, studied in urban settings. But then we can also not fail to recognize that in the case of rural areas, we are finding a high um, evidence on social cultural factors that affect food choices. Uh, in terms of distribution of evidence by target population groups, uh, we find that most studies focus on adults. And this is particular in terms of affordability of food, uh, convenience, the health and nutrition aspects, psychological factors, social cultural factors, and also sensory appeal. But then we cannot fail to recognize that we find uh, issues affecting women being studied um, especially, and this is uh, with regard to social cultural factors, and this is especially in terms of uh, cultural based aspects, particularly where we find restrictions of consuming certain foods in the case of pregnant and lactating mothers. So to conclude, um, Sub-Saharan Africa first emerged as the most studied region the health and nutrition perception, psychological factors, and social cultural factors emerge as the most studied factors affecting food choices. But then we also see that uh, there are very few studies looking at um, the issues of food safety and ethical concerns in terms of the environmental and social impact of food. We also see that uh, existing studies are skewed towards urban settings and therefore future research in rural and peri-urban context is needed. 
and understanding factors influencing food choices can inform how policy and nutritional interventions and market can be adjusted to deliver healthier food choices. But then we need a systemic and spatially explicit research frameworks that really appreciate cultural and socioeconomic uh, context of, of, of consumers. So thank you very much for, 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 for your attention.